Welcome to evening prayer. Night comes early now as we get close to the shortest day. Each day seems colder with morning frosts and long dark nights. We still meet at evening time to pray together, to be silent in our thoughts and to create space to rest in God's presence. We are in the season of Advent waiting for the celebrations of the birth of Jesus, the Christ child, and wondering what this year will bring amid more concerns about the continuing challenges posed by the spread of COVID-19. We pray particularly for those who find this time of year difficult for whatever reason. You can follow the service if you printed it off. If not, I'll try and guide you through the pieces that we say together. Our opening words and after each phrase we say together as we draw near to you as night draws the day to, to a close father God draw near to us we pray as we draw near to you we seek your grace and kindness father God as we draw near to you we look to Christ for truth and wisdom as we draw near to you. We seek the Spirit's transformation as we draw near to you. O God our Father, draw near to us this night and hear our prayers. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. Your word brings on the dusk of the evening. Your wisdom creates both night and day. You determine the cycle of time. You arrange the succession of the seasons and establish the stars in their heavenly courses. The Lord of hosts is your name. Living and eternal God, rule over us always. Blessed be the Lord, whose word makes evening fall. Amen. The reading from Scripture is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord's for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord, and my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. 
For as the soil makes a young plant come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Father God, as night falls and the day comes to an end, we give thanks to you for all that we have received, food, shelter, friendship and support. Despite our failings, you continue to provide for all our needs and we thank you. Remind us, Lord, that others may not be as fortunate as ourselves and help us to do whatever we can to support those who are in need. Loving God, hear our prayers. Amen. The meditation titled Anticipation. The anticipation of Christmas, a highlight for many in the winter months, as the shop windows shine brightly on the displays, carols blast out from unseen speakers indoors and outdoors, lights are ceremoniously switched on. Do we really start earlier each year? The retailers now add other encouragements, Black Friday, Halloween, along the journey from the summer holidays to New Year. But the call to prepare for Christmas seems to go on for a very long time. Was it always like this? Surely when our loving Saviour was born, few people were expecting anything amazing to happen. Mary would have some anticipation, maybe even a longing to end, get to the end of her pregnancy, possibly even some fears about what would happen when her child did arrive. The wise men were looking for something that fitted in with the predictions they had read in the ancient world equivalent of Whitaker's Almanac. The shepherds were surprised, certainly. The rest of the world did not know anything of the events in Bethlehem. What would that momentous time have looked like if it happened right now? Would the shepherds have taken selfies and posted them on social media accounts? Would the wise men have arranged to bring along their press photographers? Would the whole world have known about the birth of the baby Jesus by the next day? What might have taken over the news by the following day, week, month? Would the whole mystery of our Saviour's birth have been another news fragment in a hectic world? Somehow, I want to step back from the wave of anticipation, the commercialised, popular run-up to the festive season, and simply look forward to celebrating our wonderful gift from God, the light to the world. Peaceful reflection in a world of busyness, a story that should be retold with its message of hope, even to our broken world. The cards, the decorations, the gifts to family and friends, all contributing to a joyful celebration of the most wondrous and remarkable gift to us.
after the next short prayer, we have the song, Wait for the Lord, followed by a period of silence and quiet for our own thoughts. And then we'll have the second short part of that song and return to our prayers. Lord of all life. You created the universe and gave us this beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. Help us to wonder at your creation, to treasure your gifts and to use them only to your glory. Amen.
the Collect for the third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare the way for thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready the way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In our prayers for others, we will have a short period of silence between each topic for our own thoughts and prayers. Father God, we pray again for our troubled world, your people everywhere, and the needs of ourselves and our community. We see around us a fragmented society, with young lives cut short for no apparent reason, with rough sleeping in our town centre, with continuing pressures on the local authority to provide services without sufficient funds with a diverse community seeking to live peacefully together. We hear that one in five young people in London are unable to find employment. We see daily evidence of desperation in our world, driving people to make perilous journeys to start a new life in a distant place. We pray for the courage to continue working together for a world of justice, peace and equality. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. We look to those in positions of authority, especially those in national and local governments, to make just and fair decisions for the benefit of all, without fear or favour. We still live with the uncertainties that have enveloped for nearly two years. A whole new vocabulary has filled our conversations. Our lives are still filled with mixed messages and fears, but we have to live, learn to live in this changed world. We pray that you, our God, guide those making choices and decisions that affect our daily lives to do so, ensuring that equality and fairness and justice are central. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. We can see that many people are unsettled by the new normal, unsure and uncomfortable, often feeling under relentless pressures. The continual change in our lives is often unsettling. We have all been hoping that the old routines would be re-established long ago, 
Our leaders often encourage us to get back to normal. We know that the loss of personal contact with friends and work colleagues and family is causing distress. In our cosy, stable world, we fear the future. We pray that you will provide comfort for those who are struggling. Guide us to provide succour and support wherever it is needed and help us to provide some stability where it has been lost. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. We are grateful for the commitment of our scientific communities who have worked quickly to develop vaccines and treatments to help us to live with coronavirus, COVID-19, the bug that has caused loss of life and long-term disabilities. We are grateful for the technologies that have enabled us to keep in contact and to establish life in a digital world. We are also aware of those who have not been able, for whatever reason, to stay engaged or to receive medical help for various conditions that impact on well-being. We pray that the inequalities of access to health care, vaccines, medicines and the digital world are not forgotten. We hope that we will be able to live more open lives and to regenerate the spirit of communities and particularly our own church community through social contact. Please guide those who facilitate this gradual opening up as they balance the benefits against the need for safety and help them to reduce the fear amongst people who have spent so long in isolation. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. We ask that you comfort those who are ill, comfort and succour them, and those who care for them. We ask that you, O God, comfort those who are finding life difficult for any reason. We particularly pray for those who are living on their own and living with isolation, loneliness and boredom. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel unvalued by our society, those who feel marginalised. We particularly pray for those who have suffered and are suffering in abusive situations or facing discrimination and violence. We ask you to guide us to greater tolerance. We ask that you give each of us the awareness of things happening around us and the courage to raise our concerns. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. 
In a moment of quiet, let us each remember the challenges that we face that we should not forget to share with God tonight. Gracious God of hope, hear our prayer. Lord, we believe that you hear our prayer and will be faithful to your promise to answer us. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our closing prayers. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so we look to you, O Christ. Amen. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us at evening prayer this evening. May God be with us and those we love. Amen. The next service of evening prayer will be again online, will be led by Peter Greystone and will be on Sunday the 26th of December, the evening of Boxing Day. Good night.